Well, when you hear Tom Cousins isn't too worried about the six run shootout. That's a bit of an ominous sign, because that's really his only weakness. You take a look at this break, this patented top cap break. Best in the world. Uh, that shot in particular. And yet again, the rewards is there for him. He's just got this magic formula. It's not just the power, it's not just the timing. You can't quantify it, but if you could, there would be a stat that said percentage of easy leaves. And Tom, you feel like, would be streets ahead of anyone else. I don't know what he does, but he sort of seems to emit force on the balls that just keeps them apart, doesn't leave clusters, and just gives himself great chance after great chance after yeah. great chance. I know exactly what you mean, and I think there's a few players in that conversation that have that kind of same formula up, but I think what you end up with more than anything else is, I see this so much with players, oh, yeah, but pl these guys get so many better layouts than we get, and all that. Look, it's the game and the, how clever they are once the layout's there. You know, we saw that with Craig Wallingham in the previous frame. He had the perfect layout but didn't quite get the cue ball and all of a sudden it became a tricky layout. Whereas Tom's been playing at such an elite level that he's getting good layouts and he's making them look incredibly easy because he's playing so well. So it time and again that Quite often you watch Tom Cousins play, and it's almost like he's got his pipe and slippers out. He's strolling around the conservatory at home, totally uninterested, just potting balls. But he does this against the best players in the world on the biggest stage. Tremendous talent. And it's starting to get to the stage where People are starting to insert him into that that conversation with the likes of your Poxes, your Mellings, your Hills. It's good company to be considered in. Absolutely. I mean, he's already a two-time world champion. He's got so many more titles ahead of him. He, you know, I said it right at the top of the show. He's the best player in the world right now. The rankings tell you that. Yes, Mick Hill's going to be the top seed all year. That's how it works. But on, on the provisional, he's, he's streets ahead of anybody else. The titles he's winning now, he's won so many ultimate ball titles. It just, it, and it's relentless. He, he just looks he, so relaxed. It, it's, you feel like it's just a matter of time before the next one comes and then the next one comes. He's, the sky's the limit for him. He can certainly, you know, do whatever he wants in this game. I mean, he's already going to go down as one of the legends of the game, but he could really leave a legacy. After Shane Thompson did it in year one, I really, truly didn't think we might never see a player go back to back in weekends and win. Oh, well, pause that thought. Goobs, he's golden. Scott Gillespie with a wry smile. He can do no wrong at the moment. Golden break in response. And in the blink of an eye, it's 1 1. And that right there tells you where Scott Gillespie is, Simon, because a year or so ago, I remember watching Scott I think he was in the Players' Championship and he hit quite a few golden breaks. He almost made a thing out of celebrating them. But now he's, he doesn't want to celebrate them. He's back in, he's back in demon mode, do you know what I mean? He, he almost doesn't want them. He's confident enough in his own game that he doesn't need them. Previously, he was so happy to get them, he wasn't afraid to celebrate them. He also knows that will hurt Tom. You know, as much as Tom is, is very laid back, he knows that will hurt and, you know, that it's, it's part of the game. And yeah, he's a, he'd be very, very happy. Not Tom's usual standard of explosion, but yeah. still makes a ball yeah, and still gets matter. a layout. Yeah, it doesn't matter. You just watch the pack here. They don't quite go for him. He put a little bit into that as well. Got a little bit of, uh, of the old Q bend on the go. Didn't quite time it as well as he would have liked, but I mean, this is the layout that you expect Tom to get. Could go either colour set here. Well, he's looking at reds. Yeah, red right below the eight ball is the one that's catching my eye. It looks very simple, but that's the one that can catch you out, and that's why he's dealing with it early. This is what I was talking about in the previous frame. You know, a lot of players in there, they see the reds at the top and the reds at the bottom. They clear up the reds at the top, come down, and then find they've got an awkward connection towards the end. But when you've got somebody like Tom, 
you know, and there's a lot of players with, with great patterns that they see it all the way through and they just see that one's the problem, come down, get rid of it. And now it's, I mean, it's just completely ABC for him, really. Fabulous cueist is Tom Cousins as well. Very seldom misses a ball. He's sort of looking for, if you're sort of running into Tom Cousins in a tournament, you know there's just no weakness. He was a top trump, top trump card. He stacked out all the categories. <laughs> there's just no weakness there. You've just got to hope you get the chances. Yeah, absolutely. Just taking his time on this one because he's, he's landed just off straight the wrong way. And he wanted to ideally finish the other side of straight on this one so he could just take the eight ball in the same pocket. Probably go for right centre now, but yeah, that's actually a lovely shot there. Yeah, he just played took his time, enough, but played it with oh. loads of side just to kill the cue ball off the cushion, didn't he? Yeah, and he, he took his time just to to sort of just to confirm exactly what he was doing and didn't want to rush it. And yeah, it's just he's in full flow, isn't he? Yeah, two one, two visits to the table for Tom Cousins, two frames on the board, just a day in the life of Top Cat. player he is four times now a pro series champion when the champion of champions to boot in December the only surprise in December was that he didn't go further in the pro cup he was eliminated by Tom Ford in that competition they could meet again were Tom to get through tonight and through his semi-final Tom Ford and Stevie Dempsey make up the first semi for next week, Sean Chipperfield awaiting the winner of tonight's group. Another fabulous break from Scott Gillespie. He's always been a confidence player and a super guy off the table as well, a player that you can't help but root for a little bit. And one of those that when he won his first title, I don't think many would have begrudged him it. No, absolutely not. I'm a big, big fan of Scott. and big fan of Scott off the table. I said to him jokingly this week, the only thing that going on a good run on the pool table has done for you is it's just hurt your golf game a little bit. <laughs> but that's what he's been doing since he won the Masters, spending more time on the golf course than the practice table. But back in on the practice table this week, ready for tonight. And it showed, didn't you, that Masters performance. You know, he had to play a quarter-final and a semi-final on that on that Masters final day. It was awesome in both of those performances, as good as we've seen him with Ultimate Pool, properly back to his best. The final was uh, it was Shredsville. Let's let's have it right between himself and Jimmy Croxton. They they both stumbled towards that finish line, but just getting over that line difference that makes in in any sportsman's psyche is huge yeah next time he makes a final i don't see it going that way that was all about the fact that the prize on offer for especially for scott because of the pressure externally and internally was huge and it just it looked like scott from year one rather than how he played previously in the tournament and but the way he played previously in the tournament was absolutely fantastic he was so good player cut from the same sort of cloth as uh, Craig Waddingham with his patterns. Not necessarily as, they're almost divided in two really. You'd sort of put Phil, Phil Harrison and Tom Cousins in, in one school and, and Goobsy and Wad in the other. Yeah, I can Scott, get a, get Scott and Craig aren't, happy, aren't unhappy to, to leave themselves big pressure parts. They both back themselves in that department. Don't always have the world's most perfect cue ball or patterns, but they get out more often than not. Scott's gone through this one quite nicely. A little bit of work around those yellows just to pick them apart. He'd love to have been straighter on this red to the bottom left. It looks like the natural's taken him towards the red. But it looks like he can just drop it in and, and hold. Yeah, it looks like he should be able to. Always 
Yeah, I was going to say, just for a second, I thought it overhit it because he was putting it on the thin side, but he pulled up plenty in time. Just about judging this shot, doesn't really want to hit the yellow. Won't be the end of the world if he does, but wants to sneak around the back of it if he can. Eight ball waiting. Yeah, and this is where being straighter on that previous one would have helped. It means the yellow at the bottom of the table doesn't become a problem. In the end, it wasn't. And it's been some start for both Scott Gillespie and Tom Cousins. Both yet to blink. And we are Desmond through the first ten and a half minutes in this one. So player is Scott Gillespie, former world champion in his own right. And previously to his Masters title, only won a few weeks ago. The Supreme Series was his biggest performances. Really the precursor to the Ultimate Pool events. It was the event on the eight ball calendar where all the best players played in. They were playing over long races, multiple rule sets, and Scott won two of them. has been on the hunt ever since the enforced break due to COVID to recapture that sort of form. He's edging closer now. And as he alluded to in his interview with you, Simon, he's fully aware of how well Tom Cousins is playing at the moment and how good he is. But like any player, Scott backs himself and just wants the chances. And here is the first chance to edge ahead. He can keep Tom Cousins off the table now. Trickiest layout off a Tom Cousins break, though. Red and yellow together in the bottom half of the table. Awkward. And if it's yellow, going to be yellows, which is, looks like what he's eyeing up here, it's away from the rest of the yellows. I only wonder whether it drops in the right centre. It probably does. But it's still not a great ball because you don't have a good ball to sort of land on it into the right centre. So this is far from ideal. And it obviously goes without saying, this is a massive visit to the to the match really. Well he could probably get there now if he wanted to in this yellow closest to the left side pocket. Yeah I, I quite like that. I mean for me you either get there now or you leave it late but if you leave it late you really are asking for trouble but the, it connects well to the eight ball. Very close to time fouling there was just in time. Did well there you know he's played a good shot too I think he's hit the gap. I think the yellow closest to the two reds together actually passes into the middle pocket, which makes his work a little bit easier. These aren't the finishes where Scott would tell you himself he excels at. It's a little bit nippy and a little bit a little bit tricky. He had a good look to whether the yellow goes in the right centre pocket because that would have really helped. He, do, he really does want the yellow nearest the left centre to be his ball onto the one in that we're talking about being last, the more awkward one. Yeah, because it's slightly lower than the pocket. He can manufacture more of an angle. He can pot it high as we look at it. He, might, look be able to, he might be able to play on it now. Oh, he's going to move it. Oh, that's a great shot. It's very good. Off I'm, the I'm, plant as well. Yeah, I'm surprised to see him move it because I thought it did go, but he played it in such a way where he was guaranteed to be on the one in left centre if he got that full ball contact on the red and yellow, which he did. And he'd have been very unlucky not to open up and leave a, a good chance to get out. So, well played shot. Oh, well. Done all the hard work. And falls at one of the final hurdles. That was all from digging down on the cue ball. Yeah, just you don't quite get that perfect and you throw some side on the cue ball, deviates and all of a sudden you miss what looks like a very simple pot. And it was a very simple pot, but it was the cue ball that he was trying to put with it that caused the problem. Still a major surprise to see that happen. I'm interested, what was he trying to... Well, he just needed to get the cue ball back to the center of the table. If he just drops it in, because he's on the cushion, if he just drops the, the yellow in, he's not good on the next ball. So he had to try and get the, the cue ball back to the, almost 
bang in the centre of the table. Anywhere near that would have been would have been fine on both yellows. Oh, bad moment for Scott Gillespie. Tom Cousins is going to get away with one. And for as good as Tom's been, you can't have runs like he's on without plenty of moments like this. It's amazing how many players will tell you that when they hit a bit of a streak and they find a bit of form and they're winning tournaments, how many opportunities they're handed than they, than they were before. The players are scratching around for form and results. They don't tend to get these sort of rubs. Tom Cousins is in front. Right. Courtesy of a Scott Gillespie mistake. And it was a big one. Doesn't look it, but I think he'll be quite relieved that he wasn't punished for the dry break. And this is where Scott needs to be mentally strong. Mistakes will happen. It's about how you respond to them. He still has the next break, so in his own mind, he still should be thinking positive. Mind of what we've got coming up next week. Sean Chipperfield awaiting his opponents. It's a slight change of format next week. It's not the group. Tom Ford and Stevie Dempsey will play a semi final. Sean Jimmerfield awaiting the winner of tonight. That's the 15 second shot clock we go. I feel like you've got quite short odds on a dry break there from Scott Gillespie, but maybe it's his sort of form and that's influencing things that's a lovely break i felt like they gave, he gave that one even more a little bit of frustration in that one but they really exploded on him and it's a lovely layout for him he can just die this one in oh, i'd love a little bounce i mean he's okay i mean he's, it's not much of a problem but a little bounce there and when he's about to clip back into the centre pocket, just gives him that little bit more control. Well, he's still absolutely fine. And that nicely, actually. Yeah, in good shape. full lip of the pocket, which I always feel like it's quite risky because it can make you look very silly if you get that one even a little bit wrong. Straight into the bottom right-hand corner was where he was trying to get to off the red left centre. But now the red's taking him up the table. So this is a, a full reroute here. This was his second last ball. It still won't be a problem for him, though. Yeah, it was, there were so many options there that did enable him to sort of play areas. It's just that he always had this one as his eight ball. This was the one to get on the eight ball, but leaves the red a little bit higher so he can just drop through and take the red left centre now. Again, he wanted to be straight and he's short of straight, so may just have to accept what he's got here, which is leave an eight ball long. It looks like he's jacking up, so may not be. That's a confident shot. Yeah. Three, three. Scott Gillespie not going away. We've got one minute and 55 seconds left. We will have one more frame. Tom Cousins breaking off in it. And that, to me, sums up Scott Gillespie 2023 compared to Scott Gillespie 2021 and 2022. He's made a mistake, and OK, in these small margins, it feels like a big one. The fact that he didn't punish the dry break from Tom Cousins and go 3-2 in front. But instead of backing that up with a dry break or something tentative and another mistake, he's backed it up with just a, a flawless break clearance and, and said, over to you, Tom. You're still going to have to go and win it here. Yeah, it's that, it's that often sought for thing in any sport, belief. And he has now got lots of it. 
You can have all the belief you like. He's not necessarily going to have a chance in this final frame if Tom Cousins can make a ball and run these out. Well, he has made a ball. Do you know what else he's made? He's made the cue ball. And Scott Gillespie has one minute and 45 seconds and ticking to win the first match of the night for these two. And these reds are good. These reds are really good. He doesn't actually need to rush here. You've got five reds in the eight ball. It's six pots, 15 seconds a shot. You don't have to be sprinting around the table. Yeah, takes it long to guarantee the good angle on the red left centre to track down the table. I think he's going to leave the red over right centre for potentially last ball. Yeah, that is really nice. Just don't let the eight ball get in the way. Only thing that can go wrong here. And he has a massive gap between the red and the yellow, the eight ball and the yellow, so there's really no problems. Lovely. Oh, this is almost in ultimate pool terms. Scott Gillespie 2.0. Confident. Scott Gillespie full of belief and he's going to beat Tom Cousins in his first match tonight. Tom Cousins will have to come from behind.